Hey guys, during this video you're going to learn everything there is to know about zoysia grass and why it's awesome and why all your neighbors chose are choosing to go to zoysia grass. You've seen it in the neighborhood, it's getting growing in popularity. You don't want to miss out on the boat and you're interested in maybe zoysia grass is right for you. So today you're going to watch this video, you're going to learn about zoysia grass. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about zoysia grass and at the end I'm going to allow you to buy an installation of zoysia grass if you think that's right for you and we're going to make it really for you. So first, let's talk about different types of zoysia grasses, why they look different, and how to identify some maybe some, some uh, lawns in your neighborhood that have zoysia grass, and then that way you can go and, and find the nearest address near you and touch it and feel it and get to know your zoysia grasses. Hey guys, we're up here. We're going to look at some different types of grasses. We're going to talk about the pros and cons. Which grass is best for your lawn? And if it's a zoysia grass, which type of zoysia grass is best for your lawn? We're going to cover St. Augustine grass. We're going to cover Trinity zoysia. We're going to cover Zeon zoysia. And we're going to cover Palisade zoysia grass. And there's some other grasses, of course, Bermuda grass, TIF 419 Bermuda, Common Bermuda, Celebration Bermuda. Lots of different grasses. And this is just a Palmetto St. Augustine. There's lots of other grasses of Palmetto. Meadow, Del Mar, Raleigh, different types of St. Augustine's. But today I don't have all the grasses, but we're going to talk about these. These are the most prevalent grasses that you're going to find here in North Texas. Uh, aside from, I don't have the TIF 419 Bermuda with me today, but we can talk about that. So let's start with talking about the grass we don't have. And actually this is, yeah, there's none planted up here. This could, no, that's not it. Anyways, so a TIF 419 Bermuda is going to be probably a step above a builder's grade Bermuda. Builders usually put in common Bermuda grass, so it's great for full sun. Um, um, it'll have those crow's feet seed heads that pop out. It grows a little bit faster than say a TIF 419 Bermuda lawn. TIF 419 Bermuda is an upgraded Bermuda grass. It looks a little tighter, a little shorter. Doesn't pop up those seed heads as fast as a common Bermuda Bermuda will do it. But it's definitely still a full sun type of grass. Needs six to eight hours of sun at least. And then you got a celebration Bermuda grass, which has a little bit of a, like a, a bluish tint to it. It'll grow a little bit deeper into the shade. Instead of six to eight hours of sunlight, it probably just needs five five to six okay but then once you're away from the five to six hours then we're starting to talk about shade tolerant grasses or premium turf grasses and so that's where we're going to start in with our st augustines and our zoysia grasses so i'm going to flip the camera around here we're going to get some close-up views and we're going to first start talking about this palmetto st augustine so let's check this out all right guys so i just grabbed a couple squares off of a bunch of pallets over here first we're going to talk about this grass this is a palmetto st augustine they have the long runners so some people don't like runners some people they don't care it looks fine it's a it's what you would consider a wide blade grass it needs about three hours of sunlight and uh, this is what you typically find in a lawn with a lot of shade it's gonna be a st. Augustine type lawn um, some people love it some people hate it there's a lot of personal preferences out there of course I'm mr. zoysia guy so I don't particularly like st. Augustine grasses it does have a have its use though so a lot of people like it and they think it's nice and lush and all that kind of good stuff so it's an option for you shade loving people it also can do full sun. All these grasses can do full sun, but these this, the big pro about these grasses is that it can also go where Bermuda cannot go, and that's like three to four hours of sunlight. So this is the Palmetto St. Augustine. Now, a con with the, with this is there's pests that will hit all grasses, but it seems like fungus just really loves to hang out with the St. Augustine grass. So especially this year, in the early spring, when every other grass is coming out of dormancy, and zoysia's not immune to it either, but fungus has been knocked out just tons of lawns out there with that brown patch or take all root rot st augustine decline chinch bugs grub worms lots of stuff will take out a st augustine yard all right next up on the list this is trinity zoysia it's not like zeon zoysia over here trinity zoysia is not considered a an ultra dwarf or anything but it does grow tighter and shorter and slower than say a zoysia grass it looks just like zoysia grass if you let it grow to about an inch and a half or inch or something like that i really don't have anything negative to say about it i'd have seen some winter damage in some of the trinity zoysia in my first year of installing this grass uh, but i have seen it come on strong this year in those lawns that have it so i'm sure i will show you a couple of videos where we've planted it so you can see it in person not just like little squares here but we'll go show an, an install of a one and a two year old lawn with trinity zoysia so it is shade tolerant i think it's i think they say it's like three to four hours i'd say the biggest characteristic difference is it's just a short growing grass and it's nearing that dwarf 
kind of blade. So short loving grass. If you like to reel mow, then this might be the grass for you. Everybody's making fun of me making videos up here, buddy, but I'm working. <laughs> All right, th next up is Zeon Zoysia. It's like an America's number one seller. Surely it's one, it's our number one seller of, of Zoysia grass. And um, it's got a nice deep color. And I mean, these, these two squares are on the same palette. They just happen to be a little bit different color, but one probably just has a little bit more moisture in it. But anyways, let's get a a closer kind of look here so it's a lot of blades per square inch to help you choke out the weeds it likes to be mowed at about inch and a half i would say one inch to one and a half inches is going to be ideal for this guy you don't want to be really tall because you'll start to develop a thatch layer on the side here and then when your mower goes over it it's going to start building up a thatch layer and your mower is going to be riding on a thatch layer and then before long you're going to be up at four inches so i'd say start it at one and a half inches or one inch and leave it there all season because if you start mowing it at two and a half to three inches it'll develop that thatch layer and then before long it's going to be really thick uh, with thatch and everything and then and then it's going to thicken up and you're going to say oh i hate zoysia grass hard to mow and really it's just you're you're mowing it wrong so if you find yourself in that situation i would mow it really nice and tight bag it up out of there go get a dethatcher dethatch the lawn bag up all that thatch and now you're resetting the height of your lawn it's going to look like crap for about four weeks but you know get it down to your one inch mark and and ride it that way all all season long all right so that's zeon zoysia just needs about three hours of sunlight three to, i would say three to four hours of sunlight nice dark dark green color and then there's another grass that looks just like it it's called emerald and this is just a coincidence that these two grasses aren't the same color i don't even know if you can tell that through your phone but there's there's a dark forest green and then there's an emerald green and these both happen to be zeon today but that's kind of like a color difference you can tell whenever you got a, a dark green versus an emerald green fine bladed zoysia grass is that emerald is i don't have it here today but emerald is pretty much just like a zeon except it needs four hours of sunlight instead of the three to four hours of sunlight so and it's a lighter shade of green always so i always choose if they want to fine blade grass i just go ahead and choose the zeon because it needs less sunlight and it's a darker green and it's just that's just a bonus for me. All right, I'm gonna catch my breath here. Whew. All right, now we're gonna talk about Palisades Zoysia. Palisades is a medium bladed grass. So as you can see, the let me put them right on top of each other. You can see a fine bladed grass and a medium bladed grass. And that St. Augustine down there was that wide bladed grass. So we got a fine blade and a medium blade. And some people think Palisades, beautiful freaking yard. It's, it's great, it's soft. Let's run barefoot in this stuff. And it grows, and it's like the most shade tolerant of all the Zoysia grasses. It's like three hours of sunlight this stuff is gonna be thick and healthy choking out weeds and uh, doing good I'm up here at the the, the sod broker everybody's working and making noise and I'm over here in my own little world but you guys I know you want me to be here you want me to tell you all the facts and and show you all the good stuff so that's what we're doing this stuff likes to be mowed at about one and a half to two maybe two and a half inches tall uh, some people mow their grass taller and that's fine you're just gonna have to you know dethatch it and watch out for that fungus and stuff like that but i like to mow it at one and a half to two and a half inches and it's at the highest it's gonna look amazing and you're gonna love it palisade zoysia that's our number two seller and it's only number two because usually when people go to zoysia grasses if they're coming from a saint augustine and they hate it in the first place and so they're trying to go fine blade they wish they could have bermuda but they have a shade or they wanted a zoysia because they want the best lawn that you can possibly get but they hate the look of saint augustine and so some people think you know to get the furthest away from saint augustine they don't want a medium bladed grass but i think it looks just fantastic anyway so it's really personal preference it's like you like ford or chevy stuff like that so it's medium bladed or fine bladed but some of the golf pro people out there people like to golf they like to go fine blade some people just yeah, it's just really personal preference you gotta you just gotta see some lawns and see what you like out there. Let me flip this camera around again. The grass gets shipped daily. It's fresh. It's about four o'clock today. The trucks are just coming in. How long ago did they harvest that? When did they harvest that grass? Uh, this morning. This morning. Okay. So harvested it this morning. Yes, it's in Dallas by four o'clock. That's going to go out tomorrow straight to these houses. Nice, moist, sod, ready to go, ready to go down. And that's uh, that's low-risk grass. That's fresh stuff right there. Well, I like seeing full truckloads of grass come into town. That's it for this part of the video. So basically to understand which which type of lawn you have um, when you get an estimate from us we can just send you a list of local north dfw kind of addresses you can drive by they'll say address palisades address trinity address Zeon, stuff like that so you can go and see them in person there ain't nothing like driving by seeing it with your own two eyes not on a phone or on a computer screen 
the drive by see them in person and stuff like that so we've got all of our address divided up by little cities so if you're in allen or or plano and you're looking for like a plano sod installation you can look at all of our zoysia lawns in plano and kind of just do a little route drive by and see the different types of stuff there ain't nothing like seeing it in person and of course if this is a long process for you you're thinking about it you're not ready to pull the trigger you might want to go see it when it's dormant you might want to go see it when it's nice and green different types of the year you'll see that some of these lawns are going to get yard of the month even in the winter time because they always look good so uh look for that and we'll do our best to give you a good video though so we're going to go and see a couple of our lawns here shortly and let's just cut to that Here's a nice Zoysia Lawn, a fine blade Xeon. Nice dark green color, but really what I want to talk to you today about is St. Augustine dominance. You can see how here's the border of this property right here at the fence line, and St. Augustine has been rushing into your yard. So you're going to want to put up some kind of a border, whether it's a concrete border, if you want to hit it every week with a string trimmer, which is a little bit more work than you'd prefer, but you know, some kind of a border here, and I'll show you some photos of what, what some of our customers have done. What I really recommend is just like a, a four inch or five or four to six inch stamp concrete kind of a border that way you can see when those runners jump over it you can whip it with the stream trimmer uh, another way to do it is to do those uh chop stone border like kind of like stones like this here in the flower beds you can do something like that and get your footer in mortar it in and have a chop stone border or that stamp concrete border anyways some kind of a barrier you can't just use like metal edging or rubber edging because it's going to jump over it so quickly you'll never see it it'll root in before you even know it but if you have a four to six inch wide border you know it goes down in the ground about four inches with a footer then you have your chop stone which is about four inches tall so you're you know four to six inches of depth so those roots aren't going to really go under it and then you have four to six inches wide as well so the time it takes to crawl over that is going to give you time to see that so you can whip it and then there's also a chemical if you want to treat it with a chemical to eliminate saint augustine out of your zoysia and not harm your zoysia grass that would be called quinchloric so look for that in all of the places that you buy chemicals anyways those those runners they really come in they dominate st augustine's a dominant lawn zoysia is a beautiful lawn so we want to protect it against the bad infiltration of st augustine this is what we got with uh trinity zoysia so as we talked about it's going to be cut very short tightness of this lawn trinity zoysia is a, a fine bladed zoysia so it kind of looks like a zeon zoysia except it's a little bit dwarfer than a zeon zoysia but it looks nice and tight so if you're a person that thinks maybe real mowing is for you you want to cut it really tight give it that kind of golf tee look or something like that then this is a great lawn for you it grows really short really really slow and you know you can the color is not as deep dark on this lawn today as say a zeon zoysia but probably some iron or something and you could probably get some more color out of this but it looks really really fat really amazing so you can kind of see how when we installed this we slammed it to the ground so that it could be mowed tight and uh, it's a nice beautiful trinity zoysia lawn it kind of cruised through the lawn a little bit and this is wow yeah, that sprinkler head. See how tight that is. So Trinity Zoysia Grass. Here's a nice tight Palisades lawn. It's not one of my sod installs, but it saw it down the street as I was driving. It's got some nice color in it. It's got a fresh mow on it. And you can see it still has the a nice medium bladed grass so it looks a lot different after it's been mowed right looks really healthy it's got a really cool color to it um so we talk a lot about zeon zoysia but palisades is a freaking bad to the bone lawn got a couple scars out here from some so maybe had some damage or something but overall he's got a bad to the bone lawn every homeowner could be proud of that sucker so palisades zoysia is definitely an option an option for me i like zeon but i I sure am a fan of, of how this Palisades is looking. He got a great install from some service provider, but it wasn't me. But uh, anyways, he managed to find a good guy out there to do a good sod install. So anyway, that's Palisades Zoysia, guys. Well, another close-up look here. It looks like it's being mowed at like two, two inches or so. Pretty tight. I love it. <laughs> My footprint's still in it. It's a nice barefoot running lawn. Run in lawn. It's nice and soft. Pretty cool. Palisades Zoysia. They're mounted. You know, a sprinkler head's supposed to be mounted at the concrete level. This one's about three and a half inches high. Look, this is about three inches high. All the sprinkler heads in this whole run are that high. But pay attention to this. How in the heck are you supposed to mow your yard and not scalp the edges? Because quite frankly, the guys are going to run a wheel over here because 
you know, trying to get all the way to the edge. If they put their wheels up here, they're not gonna mow this last couple inches. So, of course, every lawn care guy wants to do the best job possible and get all the grass, but in doing so on this lawn, he would have to run his wheel on the concrete, and in doing so, he's gonna scalp the edge there. And that's why we install our sod. We get rid of all that soil by, first we're gonna kill the lawn, of course, we wanna get rid of the old grass. Then we're gonna scrape the old lawn off with a sod cutter. And then we're gonna run that sod cutter back and forth about five more times, inch by inch by inch. And we're gonna get down to the level of this, then we're gonna go two inches lower. Because when we bring our sod out, we're gonna have some compost mix that we're gonna amend the soil with. And then we're gonna have about an inch and a half of soil that comes with our sod. And so then we're gonna be flush with the concrete so that when we mow it, we're not scalping these edges. And guess what else we're gonna do? We're gonna drop the height of these sprinkler heads down to a proper level so that your mowing guy doesn't clip them off. So we got some work to do on this lawn if he lets us uh, reset his lawn. We'll see how that goes. But anyways, when you're out there hiring a uh, sod installer, you wanna make sure that they're gonna not just slap stuff on top of your existing uh, sod height. They're gonna re-level, regrade, and replane this stuff. And they better bring a couple of dump trucks or dump trailers because they're going to be throwing on this lawn we'll probably throw away about 14,000 pounds of soil. Hey guys, we're at the process in this sod installation. It's one of my favorite parts of the sod installation where we get to, we come through here with some string trimmers and all this stuff is dead. We've killed out all this existing turf. But now we just came through with string trimmers and zipped it down to the soil line. And the guys just blew it all and bagged it up. You see some stuff over there piled up in the corners of all of the debris, all of the grass clippings just piled up over there in the corner. So, but why it's my favorite part of the sod installation is because I can look look out across all the soil and see all the uneven spots and stuff like some people would say they have a, a pretty level lawn or, or they may say that they have a very uneven lawn but it's really hard to tell until you get all that grass off of there because if you mow it a bunch of times it's all going to kind of look the same but after you get the grass out of here then you can really start to see you got some uneven stuff going through here and so this is the part of the process we're getting ready to start our rough grade so the guys will you know knock down some of these hills if they have to with the rototiller or we can simply come in with some of this compost mixed soil which is what we're going to feed the lawn with anyways and this is going to be dragging some of this compost mixed soil into the low spots and it will kind of like even everything out and that's going to do a couple things it's going to give us a fine grade it's going to give us a good root bed for that new sod and I don't know what else, it just looks good. So I love it. So compost mixed soil is one of those things that helps us to level it out, make it look great. And you really can't tell what you're dealing with until you get all that grass clippings out of the way. And he's just mounding it up. We're gonna go through all this stuff away. Yeah, that's good for allergies. All right, later y'all. This compost mixed soil is pretty awesome. So I guess let's talk about compost today. Compost, it's such a great topic, uh, but it's always warm whenever you get compost. And that's because obviously when it decomposes and all that kind of stuff, it's uh, a lot of stuff takes place in there and it kind of cooks the organic material that you have whenever you're composting, whether they're throwing in shrubs or, or chipped mulch, some mixing some soil into it, it starts to decompose and creates that warmth and the good thing about that warmth is once it's about 130 140 degrees or something inside of that mulch pile it's gonna roast all the weed seeds that, that are inside of that compost so you're not going to if you have a fear that you're gonna get this compost soil from us and it's gonna bring all these weeds into your yard it's not gonna do that because all those things are roasted with the temperature of the compost so that's a pretty cool feature of what compost does gee whiz Tanner that's pretty cool so anyways guys are out look at this guy hustling having fun hustling having fun earning a paycheck making an awesome yard we're gonna go in the back and see what's going on back here we spent the morning uh, leveling the yard up and we marked some sprinkler heads and this is a pretty cool lawn they put in a brand new fence hey guys. they're doing some work on the inside they're just kind of you know spending that money to make their quality of life go up and of course we're gonna dress it up with the final bit and put on a great new awesome zoysia lawn back here it's a cool little water feature we like the performance over there giving out the log the guys are saying yes sir we can rock and roll anyways we're out here we tilled up this whole area uh, first we killed it out of course that's what we do is we kill out the old vegetation and till it all up we kind of marked our little property line here where we're gonna install the grass because these trees are gonna provide a little bit too much 
much sun uh, shade over here. So this is our go or no go for grass kind of area. And then this area is gonna all get rocked up, put some nice gravel pad or something over there. And then this whole backyard is gonna be huge play area. So that's gonna be awesome. And it's all been tilled up and leveled up, new soil compost put down. And of course the next step is that awesome grass that's out there on the front. This is gonna be a, I think we're doing Xeon Zoysia here on this property. I'll have to go out there and see, I forget. Anyways, great stuff if you guys want to get just the best uh, sod install you can. We'll, we'll level it up. We'll level these sprinkler heads, point everything in the right direction. A key amigo. Are you, are you out here? Yeah. All right. A key amigo. You might learn some Spanish watching our videos. You learning any Spanish today? I know I have this last week. All right. Anyway, we're having fun. Hope you guys are having fun too. Uh, we love to come have fun on your property and saw an awesome grass. Go to zoysiasod.com. So part of this process of why we go down in the parkways uh, and how, why is it important to us? Uh, so kind of take a look at this here. And this is what happens whenever we can take it down to two inches below the concrete. When we bring our compost soil in here, oh, my shadow's up here. Let me get out of here. When we bring our compost soil in, and then, you know, this grass has some soil that comes with it as well, about an inch and a half of soil there. So we're, we're below the grade of the concrete, but when we slam the, the new sod there, it becomes flush with the top of the concrete, and it looks so good. It looks like it's meant to be at that height, uh, nice and professionally done. So that's why we do that. A lot of people don't like to do that extra work of taking out that soil like we do with the sod cutters. But the finished look is just, man, if you're gonna spend the money and do a great investment and get a new lawn, I say put it in right and make it look really, really good. All right, you've heard the phrase of installing the grass in a brick pattern. So kind of like on your house, you have a brick and then there's a mortar line and a brick and the edges kind of line up. Now, why we like to do that on a grass, especially if you're kind of on a little bit of a slope, when the water runs off, if this wasn't in a brick pattern where the water would come down, go left, go down, go left again, go down. If the water just went straight, I can't even point. The water would just go straight down the line. The water would run off faster. And you might have a little bit of a cavern being created with the erosion when the water moves quickly down the, down the lawn. So we can slow the water down by just making it change direction, change directions. And as it does that, going down the lawn slower, it's going to soak into the into the soil and you're not gonna have as much runoff. You're not gonna have any erosion lines down the center. So that's not the main purpose of doing a brick pattern. So in case you were curious. important things we do when we come out and do your sod estimate it's always important to get somebody out there uh, to look at your lawn is to see how much shade you have and if you have enough sunlight to basically to grow a nice lawn you know you want to get some sunlight down there zoysia likes full sun but zoysia also is really healthy if you have just a minimum of three hours so we use this tool let me just show you real quick kind of what it looks like and see kind of show you how kind of like a doctor uses an x-ray the landscaper uses an app to measure your sunlight tell you if it's you know flat out go or no go for grass so let's check a look, take a look at that real quick. Right here, we have the December sun, then we have our today's sun, where this is 12th of April, and then we have the peak of summer sun over here. And each one of these little hash marks right here, that's an hour of the day. So between seven o'clock and eight o'clock, that's where the sun is. So we can tell like right where I'm standing, you have about an hour and a half of sunlight. And then we get some filtered sunlight through the tree, so we can count a little bit of that. But then over here, we got one, two, three, four, another four hours of sunlight. So right here where I'm standing, this is a great place to put some grass. So let's say we didn't have enough grass and with this, by doing this, we can see that we could just trim off these bushes, these uh, tree limbs right here and not take out the whole tree, but we can just show the individual limbs on what would create a great opportunity to grow grass. I'm not really concerned about what's going on in December, but between the growing season, which is actually, let me change the date here a little quick. There's where the sun tracks in March. So between the yellow line and the orange line, that's our growing season. And so that's where I want that sunlight. I want to have a good, at least a minimum of three hours of sunlight all the way through the day. And um, if so, we're golden. We can just plant the grass. And if we need to trim a little bit, we know exactly which limb is in the way. And that is our sunlight analysis. And that'll let you know if your lawn is ready for grass or not. So the cool thing, not a cool, let's talk about what happens to grass and why it looks different. Let me put them kind of side by side here. You can see how this one looks a little bit more lush than this one right here. I hope this is in focus. I'm not sure if it does focus very well, guys. But whenever a blade of grass, a zoysia grass, it gets dried out, the leaf kind of curls up because it's 
since all the moisture is gone. So it kind of shrinks up a little bit and kind of like what you would do if it was uh, like cold or, or the elements were just horrible. You wouldn't like be all laid out like that. You'd be like, oh, like trying to protect yourself. And that's kind of what grass does. Moisture goes out of it. It kind of curls up and tries to go into hibernation mode. So the cool thing is all you got to do is drench the crud out of that top layer. If this is planted in your yard, we always plant these last, but if this is planted in your yard, just drench it with water and boom, like two hours later, it's gonna look nice and lush again. So, gee whiz, Tanner, that's pretty cool. Let's go to the backyard over here where we're working. Everybody say hi to the nice, beautiful, awesome trucks. We got them wrapped up over at Tiger Wraps in Louisville. They did a great job for us. I'm excited about new truck wraps. So, cameo. There's, there's the customer. He's watching the work. So here's the guys working over, working way over here. Can we go to the backyard and see how it looks? Still, have, of course, we haven't uh, done any lawn rolling or final touch-ups yet. But here's kind of awesome little alleyway of grass. It's dirt before, so obviously this is a much improved. And look at this cool space. Nice big backyard pool. And now they have some great grass. Man, this camera keeps focusing. It's kind of funny. I hope you can see everything. My camera wants to have all these new settings. I don't understand technology. So we're gonna see what we got. What we have here is a, a nice pop-up spray with an adjustable nozzle. Now I do like these for a lot of reasons. They're pretty versatile in case you got some areas where the lawn isn't perfectly 180 degrees. We are here today, but you know, you can adjust the pattern by just twisting the top of it. You can really cut it down to tight or you can go all the way open to, you know, you hold down, you hold the bottom little little collar and you just rotate the top collar here and you can get yourself a nice wide open pattern. It will do 100, uh, 360 degrees. Of course, I don't want to get all wet right now, so I'm not going to do that, but that's how you, uh, you can use these adjustable nozzles and they come in different, uh, different throw patterns so if you want to go six foot or 15 foot or 18 foot you can buy different nozzles that'll throw further and if you need more volume or less volume you just use a little flathead screwdriver right there in the middle just hold on to it and turn it and it'll you know give you more volume or less volume if you got a little tight spot and you don't want to throw a bunch of water but uh invest in those things those are really easy it's kind of like a i don't know all-purpose kind of nozzle so have a couple of those in the garage. Whenever we're installing sod, we'll definitely have plenty of those with us. So when we're um, installing your grass, we're gonna make sure we fine tune your lawn. So that's an adjustable pop-up spray nozzle. And you're talking about spray nozzles and I happen to notice we got a little neighborhood dog, took a little tinkle in the lawn. And so that is a perfect example of what urine or nitrogen burn looks like. So yes, dogs, they pee in our parkways when people take a walk and all that stuff. So kind of keep that in mind when you have a back lawn and you have two to three big German Shepherd dogs or something, you know, something like that with a lot of urine, a lot of dogs, you're going to get a lot of those this looks like it came out of a little chihuahua or something but you know you can expect a, a much larger puddle whenever you have a larger dog and obviously if you have just a very small backyard with a bunch of big dogs you're not going to have much of a lawn so you know i say about two to three pallets of grass so 900 to uh, 1250 square foot roughly for one dog um if you, you know if you have a very small lawn you know if you think about that three pallets of grass is, is about good for one full-size dog and all that means is you're gonna have some great grass and some areas with some puddly burn marks so if it's much smaller than that you're gonna have a whole bunch of burn marks and I, that at that point i'm like hey you might want to think about artificial turf if you have that small of a yard it's it's still a big investment for artificial turf but maybe it's be better than looking at a whole bunch of burn marks that are huge so kind of keep that in mind um there are some methods that people use to minimize those and you can find youtube videos about how to concoct a tea or something like that that'll neutralize urine stains in in grass uh, but that's not my specialty but i just wanted to bring to your attention kind of what it looks like to identify uh, urine stains from a dog in your yard. I'm just glad that was a little baby dog. So kind of similar to St. Augustine, you can get a fungus, which this is kind of like a circular pattern here with a little copper color in it. If you see, I'm gonna get a little closer. A little copper color is in that, and that's kind of like what you should expect to see if you have a brown patch fungus in your yard. So when you see stuff like that, we like to put down a like a heritage G fungicide and maybe some sphangum peat moss to limit the 
movement of that fungus. So just because it's a zoysia doesn't mean it's immune to fungus, but it's not gonna get obliterated like your St. Augustine will, but kind of be on the lookout for any circle patterns. And if you see stuff like that, it's usually gonna be in the early spring when the cool temperatures are present. The heat really knocks that stuff out, but you know, when it's slow growing, it's a little bit of moisture in the ground, or if you put down a lot of nitrogen, nitrogen's gonna feed that fungus. So anyway, it's just a starter fertilizer, nice, easy fungus. I mean, a starter fertilizer, a nice, easy fertilizer, uh, low nitrogen is going to, uh, you know, not create such a fungus problem for you, but you can get it even in zoysia grass. All right, another thing that we always hear about is when you have a very poor root structure to begin with, like you have a bad lawn, you want us to come and replace it. We have an infestation of moles sometimes because without a hard, awesome root structure, those moles can basically just run through your yard and eat those grub worms or whatever else they're chasing. So what we recommend is putting down, you can get it on Amazon. It's called Mole Max. I think they're like little five pound bags or whatever. But you use that Mole Max on your property and all it is is granulated castor oil and you start at one end of your property and you spread like, I don't know, like a fifth of your property. And then you, you go to the next part of your property and the next. And what you're doing is you're pushing those moles off to the next property and the next part of your property. And eventually you push them off your property. Don't forget to do your flower beds because you want those you don't want those moles just to go run and hide in your flower beds. Moles are something you definitely want to get rid of before putting down a new lawn because when they do uh, burrow underneath the soil, they create those little caverns underneath. And if you're watering your new grass, all that water is going to fall down into the caverns and leave the top layer dry. So you don't want to have that sod all dried out. You want to get rid of those mole holes and let the water stay right there on the surface underneath the sod. So I often get asked, is it okay to go ahead and install the grass? I don't have an irrigation system I'm just gonna use a sprinkler and to that we say it's not recommended because you're gonna to have to water a lot we are in Texas there is heat and we want you to have enough water to do what you need to do to keep this stuff alive right so you're gonna water at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. you know early morning watering 12 minutes per zone if you have like pop-up sprays if you have the rotors the mechanical moving kind of sprinklers those are like 22 minutes a zone and if you're going to use a garden hose and one of those uh, rainbow type I don't know what you call them some kind of a uh, mechanical sprinkler that's gonna be say 20 minutes per zone then you're gonna have to pick it up and move it and pick it up and move it into all the areas we install sod that's gonna take a lot of time and so you're thinking you're gonna do that but you got to do it twice a day so we water it for like a early morning watering and then it dries out around two o'clock and we need to keep this wet so then we go through the whole process again at two o'clock so obviously if you're out there with the garden hose it's gonna take you all morning about two or three hours and then the same in the afternoon so definitely install a sprinkler system before you install your sod if you're gonna invest all this money into sod you don't want to have any risk involved with it minimal risk right that's a good idea so let's get a sprinkler system installed prior to that your budget has to grow a little bit you have to put a little sprinkler system in but it's the first process to install grass when you live in Texas you have to have that sprinkler system in operational functional and getting all of the turf areas wet so that you can minimize your risk and grow a great lawn all right so another question we get asked is what's the mowing height so if you have a fine bladed zoysia grass it needs to be about one inch to one and a half inches and let me t explain the reason behind that. A lot of people like to mow their zoysia grass even taller. It looks freaking uh, phenomenal at three inches, four inches. But what's going to happen? You got really tall, say this is really tall grass, and it's going to lay over or whatever, and it's going to develop a thatch layer. So it's three inches tall. The sun's not going to get way down in here and help you to decompose all of that thatch when you mow the lawn. So this thatch layer is going to build up and build up, and eventually your lawn mower is going to not be able to go all the way down to the and compress to down to the soil. Now it's going to be riding on a layer of concrete. Post. And then what's going to happen? Well, your mower is still set at three inches and eventually that thatch layer just builds all the way up and you're mowing tall. And now you've got a really thick zoysia lawn and you start to say things like, ah, zoysia is just hard to mow or my mower isn't strong enough to mow the zoysia grass. And that's because you're mowing it too high to begin with. And now it's just unmanageable and it's going to start to look horrible. And that big thatch layer is going to start to build a fungus layer and you're not going to have a healthy lawn. It's going to look cool in the beginning, but in the, in the end, you're just going to have a sick lawn and a hard lawn to manage. And you're going to wish you, you never installed zoysia grass but the easy thing to do is run a dethatcher through there get rid of all that thatch layer and then in the spring you're gonna scalp it bag it get that all that stuff you're gonna reset the height of your of your lawn and now you're gonna maintain it at one to one and a half inches and that's where a fine blade zoysia grass likes to be maintained it's gonna be healthy it's gonna be easy to mow it's still gonna choke out weeds it's still gonna look
looks beautiful. And actually this lawn right here is ready to be mowed, but this is about two inches right here. It looks fabulous. It looks nice and soft and easy to run on barefooted and stuff, but any higher than that, and this lawn would start to get unhealthy. So I can't hardly stand it at two inches. I wish it was at one half an inch, but, and look out there in the park where you can kind of really see that's at about one and a half to two inches. But like I say, tomorrow's mow day, they're going to knock that down a little bit and they're going to be set at about one and a half inches. So now that's a five blade zoysia. What about a medium blade zoysia, which is a little bit wider of a blade and it needs to be cut just a little bit taller. So instead of one to one and a half inches, you're going to be at like one and a half to two inches, just a little bit taller. And some people will cut that to two and a half inches. You're still all right there. So I'd say one and a half to two and a half inches, that medium blade, like Palisades, Crown Zoysia, Palisades Zoysia, Crown Zoysia, some of those medium blade Zoysia grasses. All right, here's another question. Everybody wants to know, do I have to buy a real mower or a putting greens mower for Zoysia? I heard you always have to use a real mower because it's hard to mow. And that's not true. That might've been something they heard from somebody else that said something that it's just a, it's an urban legend. So you can definitely use your normal 21 inch rotary mower like you'd normally see in the, in the neighborhood. You don't even have to bag your grass. Some people choose to bag your grass, but you should not have to bag your grass. The only time it might look like you need to bag your grass is if you mow it and there's a lot of clippings on top of the lawn. And usually that just means you probably have a little bit too much fertilizer, or there might be a few weeks out of the year where it's growing a little faster. In that case, I just hit it with the blower or maybe mow it one more time to chop that up a little bit more. But other than a couple weeks out of the year, it shouldn't be so much clippings on your yard that it, you would require, you know, bagging your yard. But a real mower is cool. It's a great look. So if you do, if you do find yourself wanting to cut your yard at half an inch, you know, if you have a fine blade Zeon zoysia grass or fine blade zoysia lawn and you want to cut it tight, tight, well, a rotary mower is only going to get you down to about a 0.75 inch. If you're lucky, uh, if you want to go tighter than that, then you're going to have to invest in a real mower at that point, which a real mower, if you don't know, and if you've seen them out on the golf course, they have like seven to 11 blades on a spool and they rotate like this instead of a one big blade on a 21 inch mower or something you can normally see in the, the typical homeowner's garage there. So yes, a real mower, they do have a cool cut. They do make your lawn look awesome. Definitely not required for zoysia grass. And if you do invest in a real mower, you're also investing in effort and time and maintenance and stuff because those mowers aren't easy to maintain. But I think the reward is there if you want to research some real mowing and stuff like that. So go look and see what that is. If you think that you're the kind of person that wants to get out there and mow your yard a couple times a week, real mower might be for you, but it's probably not for everybody else. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. I know we didn't cover everything maybe that you were looking for, but put a comment in down below. If you're if you're searching for something specific and you think that we have the answer for you, hopefully we do. And if we don't, we'll go out and figure it out for you and make a great video. Uh, put your comment, your question down in the comment section below this video and we'll get another video produced out there for you. And if you're looking for a sod installation, say you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we work mostly in the North Dallas-Fort Worth area, above 635 is where we kind of try to like to stay. Can't cover everything out there but um if you want to do a lawn renovation not just a patch job we don't want to come out and do a half a pallet of grass or pallets underneath the tree to fix your shade problem but if you're wanting to change your lawn whole front lawn the whole back lawn whole front and back lawn and do a switcheroo and get some zoysia grass well we would love to work with you we'd love to come out there and regrade and make your yard ready prepped and beautiful ready for that new zoysia grass and of course lay down that nice green final touch of some zeon some palisades all the other types of zoysia grass that are available to us over here. We'd love to do that for you. So that being said, if you want to find out more about how you can work with us, go over to zoysiasod.com and get started. We'll get you a, first, what we're going to do is we're going to get you a satellite estimate. So we're going to measure your yard real quick, get you a rough estimate, which is pretty close to our final price. But we just want you to get that price as soon as possible. So within 24 to 48 hours, we're going to get you an estimate satellite measurement. And of course, I have to see it. I want to come out there and see if you've got enough sunlight and see if there's anything weird on your yard. So I like to see every property. So we're going to come out. Anyways, you're going to get your satellite estimate. You're going to look at that. Price is okay. Okay, we're in the ballpark of your budget for the project. Then you're going to click a little link that says book a time with Tanner or something like that. You click that. You book the time. And we're going to come out. We're going to do a hand measurement, which is more accurate. We're going to see your sunlight availability. We're going to make some recommendations on tree trimming if you need it. And we're going to make sure that your yard is ready to support a new sod installation of zoysia grass. And then we're going to give you that final price, that quote right there at the appointment and then you're gonna be we're gonna be available to schedule uh, that put that project on our schedule so anyway that's how it works so if you like that you want us to handle your renovation go to zoysiasod.com and uh, we'll get you on the books appreciate you Bye.